Hello everyone. Welcome to our scripture reflection for the second Sunday of Easter. I invite you to listen to a proclamation of the gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. Peace be with you, he said to them. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. He said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So they said to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, I will not believe unless I see the nail marks in his hands, unless I put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side. Now a week later, the disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And to Thomas, Put your finger here and see the mark in my hand, and bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written here. But these have been written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm guessing that just about everyone who is watching this uh, has heard in situations where there is conflict or hurt the wisdom that says you need to just forgive and forget. I'm going to offer an hypothesis in this reflection, and that hypothesis is this, that today's gospel story suggests that uh, this is bad advice at worst and sets our sights too low at best. That this gospel story today suggests that it is better to forgive and remember. So let's take a look at how this story might make that claim valid. Okay. Uh, at the very near the beginning of this story, we hear Jesus say, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. And at first, this seems like a kind of either-or dichotomy. Either you forgive, you let the person off the hook, you don't put any kind of punishment, or you hold the person accountable. And you hold the person accountable perhaps so that uh, they will change their ways. Indeed, in the early Christian community, uh, there were three major sins that people were excommunicated for, murder, adultery, and apostasy. And much of the ancient writing says this is so that having been separated from the community, the sinner might be drawn to desire to be rejoined by changing his or her behavior. So a case could be made that forgive or retain is an either-or dichotomy. But there is something else in the story that suggests that perhaps something different is being uh, indicated. And that is that Jesus shows the disciples his hands and his side. Now, more often than not, uh, commentators will say he shows them his hands and his side in order that they can accurately identify that this is, in fact, Jesus. However, uh, there might be something else at play as well. Uh, Jesus might be showing them his hands and his side in order to remind him, remind them of how those marks got there in the first place, of how they got there as a result of betrayal, denial, his disciples scattering, misunderstanding, his enemies 
bringing him before the authorities so that he would be put to death. Um, I think it's really possible that what Jesus is doing is showing his disciples that even though he is now raised from the dead and even though he is now forgiving them, that those marks are forever part of who he now is. They are part of his identity even in eternity. And I think he may be showing his disciples that should they forgive people who have aggrieved or hurt them, that uh, those hurts and those scars will forever be a part of their identity going forward. So forgiving and remembering, I think, are part of a larger process, a larger process of restoration and recreation after sin or hurt has been inflicted. So remember, excuse me, forgiving is a process by which the person who is aggrieved becomes free of the sin that could still hold on to him or her, free from the desire for, resent, uh, for retribution, free from anger, from resentment, uh, freedom also for the sinner to perhaps to behave differently, to have a change of heart. And this kind of freedom can promote healing. Uh, remembering allows the parties involved to learn from their experience, to acquire a kind of wisdom that prevents this kind of conflict and hurt going forward, uh, both for the aggrieved and the one who is the sinner. So that taken together, forgiving and remembering in the power of the Spirit can help to restore the relationship that was broken as a result of the sinfulness. But even more than this, the um, forgiving and remembering in the power of the Spirit can help to bring about a new creation, a recreation that is even better than and more marvelous and uh, something to behold than what was the case even before the hurt was inflicted. I think when Jesus breathes on the disciples and says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, it is to send them as ministers of this restoration and recreation, which is made possible by forgiving and remembering in the power of the Spirit. So what might be uh, some practical examples of how this might be at play in our place and time. One of the examples that comes to mind is the contemporary conflict that is taking place in the Ukraine between the Ukrainians and the Russians and that involves so many other people in that area. Uh, hopefully, once the hostilities come to an end, there can be a process of restoration and recreation. And to be sure, to be sure, not only ought the Ukrainians not to forget, not only ought they to remember, but it's probably impossible for them not to remember the hurt and the pain that has been inflicted upon them. And yet in the power of the Spirit, uh, it is possible that this remembering can help them to learn from experience so that as they reimagine their then present and then ongoing future, uh, they will be able to do so in a way that builds a, a just and lasting peace. And it's perhaps even the Russians who remember this conflict uh, may be able to uh, see themselves in a new light, maybe appreciate their history and their motivations in a different way, so that they too learn from their experience. And perhaps then, again, in the power of the Spirit, what happens is freedom is given for both of them to enter into a restored and maybe even brand new relationship that was even better than what happened before the conflict, which is really years old, began in the first place. Another example that comes to mind for me is uh, family conflicts. And family conflicts can be some of the most painful conflicts that we get into. And indeed, they can leave deep and long-lasting scars, much as the hands and the side of Jesus were forever part of who he was going forward. Uh, 
they are some of the most difficult conflicts because we know or we think we know each other so well and because as families we have been involved in long-lasting patterns of communication, relationships, and resentments. They can be very difficult conflicts because some in the family might want to be made the family to be made whole again, and others would prefer to avoid, deny, or even prefer estrangement to healing and wholeness. And yet, uh, in the power of the Spirit, if there's openness to the Spirit, uh, what can happen is freedom to address the conflict and the issues in a way that respects what really is going on. And also, there can be uh, an instilling of courage to address those as well. Uh, remembering together can allow people to grow together, to, to come to uh, a greater wisdom both individually and as a family and the freedom that comes from uh, the desire to be made whole again can help families to perhaps become even better than they were before the conflict started. Uh, both are necessary, I think. Both remembering and forgiving. Both are hard. Both are very, very hard. But if there's openness to the Spirit, both are possible. And so there can be, even in family conflicts, there can be openness and possibility for restoration and recreation. So when we come back to the Gospel where Jesus says to the disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, that sending echoes through the centuries so that we are now sent. We are now sent to be bearers of the same peace that Jesus bestowed upon his disciples in that upper room, that peace that comes as a result of both forgiveness and remembering. Um, we are sent to help uh, address conflict in our own lives and in the people around us in ways that help us to be truly honest and courageous and hopeful. We are sent sometimes even to be mediators in conflicts where the parties themselves can't seem to come to any kind of common ground or move towards healing. Uh, we might be able to be ministers who help to remember and to um, forgive at the same time. We are sent as ministers of restoration and recreation. This is probably as challenging and exciting as it is um, daunting because given who we are as human beings, it seems to me that there will be over and over again opportunities for us to exercise this ministry. So having said all that, I'm going to invite us to pray a prayer for forgiveness and restoration. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, teach us how to forgive. Your word tells us to forgive others as you also have forgiven us. We need to let go of our anger, our hurt, and our pain so we can move forward, Lord. Please help us to do that. Help us to let go of resentment and soften our hearts to choose love. Give us the wisdom to handle our pain wisely and to draw boundaries where they need to be drawn. If we are angry, may we harness that anger so we don't sin against you. And when we are hurt, please help us heal. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
with you